So, you finally seen Endgame. Or, you finished reading The Prisoner of Azkaban. Or, you've seen that Star Trek episode where Spock and Kirk jump back to the 1930s. And you've got questions about time travel. My name is Shruti. Come with me on a journey through time. In 1865, James Clerk Maxwell collected a set of groundbreaking laws known as Maxwell's equations. These equations characterize the behavior of electric and magnetic fields at a constant speed of light, or C, in a vacuum. Flash forward to 1905. Einstein, heavily influenced by Maxwell's work, publishes a paper titled on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. And here's where it gets interesting. Einstein conducted a thought experiment involving relative motion or the idea that everything moves relative to something else. He imagined a clock at a train station ticking every second. If he were to travel away from the clock at the speed of light, since the speed of light is so much faster than one tick per second, if Einstein looked back at the clock, it would seem to freeze in time. But an observer sitting next to the clock, going zero miles per hour relative to this clock, would see it tick regularly. From here, he formulated a very important postulate. The faster you go through space, the slower you go through time. But how is that possible? Time is time, right? Well, here's another thought experiment to shed some light on the situation. Say you're Einstein on your morning run. Your mentor, Herbert Minkowski, is standing directly in the middle of two blinking lights that flash at the same time. He's equidistant from them, so he sees them turn on simultaneously. Now, you've been working out, and you can run close to the speed of light, a speed that you call relativistic. So you're on your morning run going left to right. As you directly pass Minkowski, the lights flash. Since you're moving away from the leftmost light and towards the rightmost light at relativistic speeds, you perceive the leftmost light hitting your eyes after the rightmost light. Now you're really confused. Maxwell's equations say that the speed of light is constant, but Minkowski perceived the lights as simultaneous, and you didn't. You're both right, and according to Einstein's second postulate, you both measured the speed of light as the same, despite the different viewpoints. So if the speed of light has to be constant, then what changed? The answer, Einstein found out, was time. He was moving so fast through space that time stretched itself to keep the speed of light constant. He called this phenomenon time dilation. Okay, that's pretty cool. It also gives us our answer as to whether or not time travel is possible. If, sometime in the future, we build satellites sophisticated enough to orbit the Earth at relativistic speeds, they'll move so fast through space that time slows down for them. An extended version of Einstein's trained thought experiment involves two clocks, one on this type of satellite and one on Earth, that functionally explains the same thing. The ticks slow down in the satellite. This could mean that after about four months for someone on that orbiting satellite, it's been maybe 20 years for someone on Earth. If you were to fly up to space, from Earth, and join the crew in the satellite, relative to your previous location on Earth, you've just traveled back in time about 19 years and 8 months. That's pretty cool. Just don't forget to bring enough plutonium to charge your flux capacitor first.